Can you believe the Nintendo Switch is now seven years old? After the downfall of the Wii U, I'm not sure just how many people were expecting Nintendo's hybrid console to be this popular and still going strong in 2024. With a successor likely on the horizon, today I wanted to look back at some of my favorite and fondest memories with this console I'd love to hear your stories down in the comments too. It's hard to put these in an order of favorites, so what I've done is I've put them in sort of like a timeline instead. So I didn't get my Switch on release date. First of all, I, I couldn't find one, so it wasn't actually until September 2017 that I ended up picking one up. By that time, Breath of the Wild had been pretty firmly spoiled for me, so it wasn't as groundbreaking for me to play as it was for everyone else. However, Mario Odyssey was released just one month later. I hadn't played very many Mario games before this and none of the Mario 3D games, so Odyssey just blew my mind. Especially back then, there were a lot of games that I started to play but didn't end up finishing, but Odyssey I just flew through. I had such a good time with the platforming and the capping mechanics, seeing each new world and collecting moons. That moment in New Donk City when you restore the power and you make your way to the festival, the songs playing, you go through that sort of 2D Mario section, that moment remains firmly lodged in my mind. Mario had some amazing games on the Switch and it all started with Odyssey. And so for me, this was a, such a strong start to owning this console. Now, while there were a few great releases from Nintendo like Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, I hadn't played Mario Kart 8 before because I didn't have a Wii U. While we did have those sort of three main Nintendo games, we, we didn't really have much else. The output from Nintendo and from other big studios was quite slow when the Switch first launched. It might be that the big developers were just waiting to see how much of a success the Switch was before they jumped in, but whatever the reason, there weren't that many games to turn to, and that's where indie developers came in. Suddenly everybody was talking about great indie games to play on Switch while we were waiting for the next big game, so some of the early ones that I remember are games like Mighty Gun Vault Burst and Golf Story. I had a great time with Steam World Dig 2, which I, I don't think I would have necessarily tried if it wasn't on Switch. And this really is the first time that I remember sort of really getting into indie games. Before that point, most of the games that I played were by the bigger studios. I hadn't really had much of a reason to look at games released by smaller teams. And it, it kind of opened my eyes to this new world of games. And to be honest, I really think that I wasn't alone in that. The Switch helped a lot of people realize that there was plenty of fun to be had outside of AAA gaming. I can't remember exactly when it was when I got an Xbox One. I think I might have had one a little bit before the Switch, but even though the Xbox One had a digital store, the eShop is the first digital store on console that I really paid attention to. While I'm not saying that it wouldn't have happened anyway, I think for me in particular, I have the Switch to thank for opening my eyes to all of these amazing games made by indie developers. Nowadays, I'm happy to play so many of them. You know, games like Hades are so popular. And for me, at least, that's all thanks to the Switch. Part of the reason that I think indie games felt so right on the Switch was that portability factor. Low budget games didn't seem to make as much sense on your super powerful new home console or maybe your beefed up gaming PC. But a little handheld, these games with their pixel art styles or their shorter length were, they just felt at home on this console. And it really helped tie into the play anywhere theme that Nintendo were going for. No longer did we have to take it in turns using the TV because my wife wanted to watch a show and I wanted to game. Instead, I just popped the Switch out of the dock and kept playing right alongside her. In those early years, I also remember taking it to work a fair amount. This was before I worked from home, so I'd take it along and sneak in a bit of Breath of the Wild on my lunch break. Early on, I'd stay up late playing Switch games in bed and even now when the weather is nice I sit out sometimes at the garden table playing Switch especially with that OLED model when it works really well in the sun. I've taken it with me on trips away and when I've gone to see family I've never quite been brave enough to play it on public transport and it's not quite as pocketable as like a 3DS but I have loved being able to take these much bigger console like experiences and play them wherever I want wherever I go. So around this time then, we had a few first party games, we had some indie games, and, and this is kind of the point when it seemed like third party developers started to take notice and the ports started to appear on the Switch. Now, some of them were pretty obvious ports that made a lot of sense on the system, but before long, we started to get the first of the miracle ports on the Nintendo Switch. And the first two that I remember are Skyrim and Doom. Skyrim may seem obvious now, but bear in mind that at this time, it was only about six years old and the idea of taking that whole open world, putting it on a small system and being able to walk around with it in your hands 
was just kind of incredible. And it runs really well. Sure, there's a bit of dynamic resolution, but everyone was just so surprised and delighted to have it running on the Switch. Doom was another surprise for a similar reason. It's not a big open world, but it's a really fast paced game and it had nice graphics. Similarly to Skyrim, there is dynamic resolution and you can see it more in Doom, but I still thought it was really impressive that this game ran close to 30 on, on the Switch. Nowadays, there are plenty of miracle ports on the Switch and I even started to think that it was old news whenever another one came around, like Borderlands for example, I was like, oh yeah, another miracle port. I will say Witcher 3 though, that was a surprise. But even though nowadays they're pretty common, it was such an exciting time when the first one started to appear. And it was really fun just to wonder which amazing game that shouldn't work on the Switch would be the next game to make its way over onto the system. Now, in 2019, Nintendo surprised the world with the launch of the Switch Lite. A smaller handheld only system with bright colors, I was interested right away. I liked that I could switch between handheld and docked, but at the same time, a smaller system seemed like a good idea. It looked like it would be much nicer to hold, and you know, there were save files on the cloud, so it seemed like you could switch back and forth between the consoles if you wanted, so it seemed like a really good idea. And I picked up the blue model. Funnily enough, I didn't get to use my Switch Lite very much because my wife took an interest in it pretty quickly and it, it's sort of become her Switch at this point. She really doesn't care about playing on the TV, so it being handheld only works perfectly. And to be honest, I was just happy to share my hobby. One of the first games that I remember her really getting into was Dragon Quest Builders 2. But since then, she's also played a lot of games like Stardew Valley and Disney Dreamlight Valley. Every now and then, we find a game to play together. And when we do, it's almost always on the Switch. And those times mean a lot to me. Not too long after the release of The Light, we also got the first entry into the Fire Emblem series on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> I hadn't really properly played any Fire Emblem games before this. I did like Advance Wars back on the Game Boy and that was by the same developers. And I tried to get into a few of the Fire Emblem series on the 3DS, but I just never ended up making much progress. But I really thought that Three Houses looked awesome. It still had that strategic RPG gameplay that I liked, but the, the power of this newer system gave a huge upgrade to the looks and the feel of Three Houses. I also sort of liked the idea of the social side. At this point, I played some Persona 5, so that helped with the appeal of this game and being able to influence your unit's training and shape what type of fighter they would be, that was a big plus for me as well. I absolutely loved Fire Emblem Three Houses. There's not too many games these days that I will put 50 plus hours into, but I had such a great time playing this game when it first came out on the Switch. Because of how gameplay time doesn't transfer over between Switches very well, it doesn't. It, the, the recording of gameplay time on the Switch is not very good. So it's really hard for me to say which of the Switch games I've played for the longest, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if this one was up there in maybe the top five. I still go back occasionally to do a few missions and maybe eventually I'll play through all four storylines and the DLC. There's just so much content in this game. Funnily enough, that social aspect does make it a little harder for me to get back into the game. I just want to get back into the battles, but it being there in the first place really helped draw me into the story and to the characters of this game and help me stick with it for a very long time. In contrast, I barely played Engage. The gameplay was good, but I really struggled to stay interested in the story. So if you were choosing between the two Fire Emblem entries on Switch, I would recommend Three Houses in a heartbeat. I don't think I need to talk too much about why, but 2020 was a really rough year. Everyone's world was turned upside down. Nobody leaving the house, work and life schedules changing. And so people were looking for comfort wherever they could. Where I live, Animal Crossing New Horizons came out li literally within days of the country going into its first lockdown. And so like many people around the world, I decided to have a go with my very first entry into the Animal Crossing series. I thought it would be fun, cute, the type of game that maybe I could play with my wife for a little bit before eventually I got bored of it. And really I had no idea what kind of impact it would have on everyone. I think I played just literally the very first day on my new island whilst showing it to my wife before she bought it too and so pretty much every single day we both loaded up the game seeing what fun things we could get up to this time now she ended up spending a lot longer playing than me but even i played this game for almost the whole year comparing turnip prices showing each other what fish and bugs we'd found going around decorating our islands and comparing them we both really enjoyed the seasonal events when these came around throughout the year and at those points we would play even longer trying to collect all of the items if we possibly could and i kind of remember that first easter event we had a lot of trouble getting enough sky eggs to 
get through that event. At this point, we'd moved in with parents because we were trying to get a place of our own and they actually have a really nice garden. And so when it wasn't too hot, we'd just sit out in the garden playing and chatting away. By the time a year was coming around, I'd started to play less and less. I do remember us both dipping back in to play Happy Home Paradise, but nowadays I don't really play it at all. Animal Crossing New Horizons though is probably the game that we have played the most together. 2020 obviously had a lot of negatives, but I'll always remember this silver lining of us playing this game together and hope for more times playing games like this in the future. Now, we're jumping ahead a little bit to the start of 2022 with the release of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Up to this point, the Pokemon series on the Switch had had a bit of a shaky start. Well, at least that's what I thought anyway. The Let's Go games were a bit disappointing for the first release on the Switch. It was just another reskin of Gen 1 with worse catch mechanics, or at least that's how I saw it. Sword and Shield, I actually quite liked, but it, but it was only really a small step forwards. And then the Gen 4 remakes were just completely disappointing. They didn't really line up with what the remakes had been before. They didn't take any of the modern games and put those features into the old games. It was just a straight up remake with different graphics. So it's not what I wanted at all. As a long time fan of the Pokemon series, all the way back to the Game Boy Color, I was starting to wonder what the future of this series looked like. Now, Pokemon Legends Arceus had been teased for nearly a full year before release, and while I was curious, I, I honestly was really skeptical of this game. That first trailer that I saw made the performance of the game look so bad, I could see the frame rate dipping in the trailer, so I opted to wait a little while to see what people were saying when it came out, and I ended up buying it a few weeks after release. This game felt completely different to any other Pokemon game I'd played before it. While I didn't like the change in the let's go catching mechanics, I, I did really like the change in the Pokemon Legends catching mechanic and the way that Pokemon interacted with you in general I found really fun. Spotting something that was a much higher level than you and actually feeling some danger because the, the player can pass out. Battles that started exactly where you were standing and actually being pretty fast paced I really liked a lot of these changes. I spent a long time on this game I really loved it. Even though it's only a couple of years old at this point I, I get this strange feeling of nostalgia whenever I hear the Jubilife Village theme from that game, which I know it sounds a bit weird, but it did have a big impact on me. I finally believed that Pokemon could become something that I wanted to play even now. I never got around to completing the Pokedex on this game, and I didn't like that the final story chapter was sort of locked behind a really long grind, but I would be so excited if they announced a sequel to this game. Now, it was around this time that we got some really interesting news about Mario Kart. At this point, Mario Kai had been out for something like eight years with the original launch being on the Wii U, but it was still selling so well. And I think at this point, there's a stat that there's been something like 60 million copies sold, which is unimaginable. It's nearly half of all Switch owners that have Mario Kart 8. Nintendo revealed that they were creating a new paid DLC for this game, and I couldn't quite believe the scope of it. There was going to be six waves of eight tracks, totaling 48 new tracks, which essentially doubled the number of courses in the game. They would release over 2022 and 2023, a few months apart. This DLC pack has probably brought me more fun than any other DLC from any other game that I can think of. If you follow the channel, I've mentioned before that most weeks I have a games night with some of my old friends from school and we all have a Switch so Mario Kart 8 has become a regular appearance whenever we play. Every time a new wave came out, the next few weeks were all Mario Kart. Sometimes it took us some time to see all the tracks in multiplayer because you can't choose exactly which course you want to play, but that was fine with us. We would have a great time either way, messing around, laughing, taking each other out, just having a great time racing. It was genuinely a bit of a bittersweet moment for me when that final wave came out at the end of last year. It had some great tracks, but that meant that it was finally over. We played so much of this game over those last two years, and I didn't even really pay for the DLC because I, was, I already had this Switch Online expansion pass and it was bundled in with that when it came out. We still go back to Mario Kart from time to time. I think at this point we're not going to be getting a new game on the Switch but I love that idea floating around at the moment that a Switch successor could release with Mario Kart 9. So finally we come to 2023 and there were some pretty good releases on the Switch last year just like there were some really good releases across all different systems. I especially liked Mario Wonder. I also know that people were so excited to have a new Pikmin game. The Advance Wars remaster finally came Came out. But in my mind, all of these were overshadowed by one other game. Yeah. 
We'd known that Tears of the Kingdom was being made for a while now, and we got on trailer one in September 2022. It showed off a few interesting mysteries, but for me the excitement really started to build in 2023 when trailer two came out. The game looked so good and the music was absolutely incredible, and trailer three a couple of months later was even better. These trailers honestly made me feel kind of emotional when I watched them. I said it before, but by the time I got my Switch, Breath of the Wild was, it was kind of spoiled for me, so really to me, Tears of the Kingdom was my Breath of the Wild. That element of discovery, figuring out the new mechanics, exploring all three levels of the world. And there was a bigger focus on story too, which means a lot to me in games. I especially liked the way that you found memories in this game. It was so much better than in Breath of the Wild, and I really wanted to find them all and figure out what had happened to Zelda. Some of the bosses were incredibly fun to take on. The final fight was great, and the way the story ended felt so right. And because I was playing this at the same time as everybody else, it was really fun just to see things pop up all over the internet at the same time that I was experiencing them. And this was my favorite game on the Switch last year. I made a video about my favorite games overall last year and this came in second to Baldur's Gate 3 but sometimes I go back and forth on that in my head and this comes out on top instead. It's up there as one of if not my favorite Switch game of all time and the whole experience from seeing that second and third trailer playing the game and beating it that was an incredible moment in gaming that happened on the Nintendo Switch. It's very likely that the Nintendo Switch will be making way for a successor this year. And I know a lot of people, even myself at times, have thought that the Switch 2 can't come soon enough. The hardware is getting dated now, seven years is a long time to be with one console. But as we come towards the end of its life, it's been really fun to look back on our time with the Switch. I think that this system has given us some amazing memories that we will be able to look back on forever. And I would love to hear what yours are down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.